I want just to read a single verse out of the Bible. It's a verse that many may know. Uh, it's found in John chapter number 3. And uh, it has been described as the good news, as the gospel in a nutshell. And that it kind of summarizes much of what the New Testament has to tell us about our way to God, or maybe better still, God's way to us. In John 3 verse 16 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And those are the words of the Lord Jesus to a man called Nicodemus, a man who was seeking after God a man who was very religious, very devout, and uh, yet he had a sense that something was missing. He hadn't found God yet. Um, and the Lord Jesus presents God's way of salvation to him, uh, summarized in this verse. And he starts with God. And that's a good place to start, isn't it? For God so loved this world. Uh, you know, sometimes people... Uh, seek for God in all sorts of places. Uh, there's a, a, a blog that I, I sometimes watch and uh, it has to do with the mountains in Scotland. And one of the videos that uh, was made, it was entitled, A Nearer the Heavens. And sometimes people buy uh, their pilgrimages and even buy their exploits, perhaps are seeking, maybe even unconsciously seeking uh, to be nearer God. But here in John 3.16, the Lord Jesus Christ presents the reality of God to Nicodemus. A God who's to be found not so much in a place or even at the top of a hill but, or, or, or in some religious uh, temple, but God who's found in his son Jesus Christ. And that, of course, is the message of the New Testament, that God has revealed himself in a person. A person that Isaiah speaks about as Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, a person who demonstrates the reality of what God is like. He shows his power in the miracles that are described in the New Testament. He shows that he's able to raise the dead as he did with Lazarus. He's able to satisfy the hungry. He's able to uh, bring living water to the spiritually thirsty, to forgive the sins of the sinner and bring light to the blind. And so he begins with God. And he moves from that undeniable reality of God to an unexpected uh, attitude of God. For again, if you're aware of the teachings of the, the scriptures, they're very clear that we are distant from the God of heaven. We've fallen short of his standard. We've broken his laws. And in fact, the first five books really of the Bible begin with the laws of God in various ways. And right the way through the Bible, it's uh, unfolded as to how we have offended the God of heaven. And yet, despite that, uh, we have this unexpected response from God that God so loved this world. And that's not simply an emotion or, uh, or a feeling, but it's something intensely powerful and intensely practical because it, it motivates the uh, response of God to a fallen, stricken humanity. He sends out, in a sense, the lifeboat. And that lifeboat is seen in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, for God so loved this world that he gave. And the love of God is a giving love. It's the love of the coming into the world of the Lord Jesus, the incarnation, but it is, it is the love of God in sending his son, not only to this world, but to a hell, uh, to the hill of Calvary, and to finish a work that is the work that uh, each of us needs. It's the work of salvation that he finished at the cross of Calvary. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, need not perish, but have everlasting life. It's that giving love of God that motivates the great plan of salvation, a plan in which God gives not what we deserve, but he gives what we need, and that is the forgiveness of sins. It is the cleansing that comes uh, powerfully and uh, passionately. It comes through the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ as he bears our sin in his own body upon the tree. I was speaking to someone recently about the way that God works in his grace and his salvation. Uh, and it's, it's pictured so clearly on the cross itself as you uh, have a glimpse of the person of the Lord Jesus hanging upon the tree 
two men, one on either side, and one of them uh, turns to the Lord Jesus Christ and utters those words, remember me when you come into your kingdom, and this day shalt thou be with me in paradise, is the answer of the Lord Jesus. There was a man who enters into the blessings of God's salvation and who was unable to change his past, unable to do any penance, any good works, unable to join a church, unable to be baptized, but he comes in faith and in trust in the person of the Lord Jesus. And that's what John 3.16 describes for us, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him need not perish but have everlasting life. And it's that step of faith uh, that takes a person from hell to heaven, that takes a person from lost to found. It's that step of faith that brings an individual into the joy of the forgiveness of sins into the power of the cleansing blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's been well said that John 3.16 is God's message, it's the good news in a nutshell. It's God's way of salvation. It's the unexpected, unanticipated uh, attitude of God to his fallen creature, to our rebellion and our sin, in pouring out his love in an intense way, uh, in pouring out his love in the giving of his son, in the sacrifice of Calvary, in the death of his son, and then offering us that as God's means of salvation. Uh, it's not by anything that we do, it's not by works of righteousness, as we'll read later on in the Bible, uh, not by works of righteousness that we have done, but by his mercy that he saves us. And so here in John 3, Nicodemus gets this startling revelation of how God works. It's not by temples or methods or religions, but it's by a step of faith in his son, Jesus Christ. And that brings us into the joy of God's saving work of salvation.